If you want to bring your scene to life, you can add a subtle wind sway effect to your game. You can grab the shader in the description below for free along with my asset pack and a bunch of other stuff like 2D water and moving platforms. Let's start. Your project has to be using HDRP or URP for this effect to work. To check, go to Window Package Manager, switch to the Unity Registry, and then type in RP. As you can see, I have Universal RP installed, but if you have High Definition RP, that also works. And also double check to see that you have the Shader Graph installed. So in my shaders folder, I'm going to right click, create shader graph URP, and then either sprite unlit or lit. I'm going to call it wind shader and let's open it up. Each shader is made up of the vertex shader and the fragment shader. So if you want to draw a cube, for example, the vertex shader will calculate the vertex positions of each corner of the cube. This will vary depending on the rotation, position, scale, camera position, perspective, and so on. And then it will send that information to the fragment shader, which will figure out which pixels are within these vertices and we'll color them in. This is where we handle color, lighting, textures, and so on. So in order to achieve this wind sway effect, we're simply going to move the vertices of the sprite. That means that we only need to worry about the vertex shader. First, we're going to create a new parameter of type texture 2D. We're going to call it a main texture, and we're going to set a default tree sprite. We're going to drag it in. Then to create a new node, right click create node or press space and then type in sample texture 2D. Then we simply hook up the main texture to the texture input. We connect the RGB to the base color and the alpha to the alpha. Now we can save the shader, right click, create and then material. This will create a material that uses this shader and then we can just simply attach it to our sprite. As you can see, nothing really changes because so far we only made the fragment shader work and now we're going to implement the vertex shader part. By default, the vertex shader is using the object space for the position of each of the vertices. So what it's actually doing is it's using the position node and it's using object space. So if we plug this in, nothing will actually change. Instead, what we want to do is split this into the RGB, which is actually X, Y, and Z positions. Then we want to recombine this. So we want to combine the Y and the Z. We want to plug this back in. We want to modify the X values. So we want to add something to the X value. So now when we increase or decrease the X value, the vertices move around. Instead of moving all of the vertices by the same amount, we want to move each vertice a different amount. And for this, we can use gradient noise, which gives us smooth random values between zero and one. This will move the individual vertices vertices from x equals 0 to x equals 1 and so we have to subtract 0.5 from the values so that it moves from negative 0.5 to positive 0.5. I'm going to set the scale of the gradient noise to 0.25 and then I'm going to create a tiling and offset node which is essentially just going to scroll through the gradient noise. If we want this to happen over time we're going to add a time node and plug it into the offset. Finally since we only want the tip of the tree to sway to the wind and we want the root of the tree to be fixed, then we can create a vertical gradient by using the UV, splitting it, and then grabbing the Y value. As you can see here, it creates a vertical gradient, and then we multiply it with the output from our gradient noise, and this will neutralize the gradient noise on the bottom part of the tree. So far, this looks good if we have only one tree, but if we have multiple trees, you will notice that they all move in the exact same way. A simple way to fix this is to add the world position node and attach it to the UV of the tile and offset. If your sprite doesn't have a lot of vertices, you can go to the sprite and set it to tight. If you set it to full rec, it will just be rectangles. But that also can look good for certain sprites. Finally, we can expose a float variable wind speed. Uh, we can drag it in the graph and we can multiply the time value by the wind speed value. And this way we can actually control the wind speed from the individual material instances.